Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another quick Python demonstration. Today we are going to talk about Python arithmetic. And the one thing you want to keep in mind is that what I show you today is exclusive or specific to Python and how it deals with arithmetic. In whatever programming language you choose to write your code in, you have to be mindful of the arithmetic rules that it has and the operations it has. Java, C++, popular languages like that are going to have different operations, some different operations than Python might have, and they might work with it a little bit differently, but I'm going to keep this specific to Python because this is a Python tutorial. So we're just going to go over the basic operations. We've already dealt with the assignment operator. It is actually an operation. It takes what's on the right-hand side of your, of your assignment statement and adds it or um, puts it into memory for whatever variable you have on the left-hand side. The rest of them are pretty basic and simple. Addition, the plus sign, subtraction, your minus sign, the multiplication is the star symbol or a shift eight on your keyboard. Then there are three different types of division and um, this is where things can change from language to language. In Python we have a single slash, which is what we call real number division. That will always result in a float number, a decimal number. We have floor division. That will always give us the exact number of full items that go into the division. So it will generally represent an integer math, um, or at least round down your float value. And the last division operation is a modulus, or what we call remainder division. This kind of takes you back to elementary school where you do division and you wouldn't get decimal points, but you would get leftover parts. Those leftover parts of the remainder, and they can be very, very helpful for us. The other... Um, Simple arithmetic is powers and exponents. Here in Python, we use two stars to do powers and exponents. So let's take some time and kind of show you how that works. Now, I'm not gonna write any fancy program here. We'll use some of these as we program later on, but I just wanna show you the operations. Something like a two plus two, okay, should equal four, makes sense. But the trick here with Python addition or any operation is it always depends on what you put around it. So if you put an integer plus another integer, you'll get an integer result. But if you introduce a float into any side of the problem, you will get a float result. A 2.0 is no different than two plus two, but I do get a different answer. And so it's something you're gonna to wanna to be mindful of, especially when you're working with other languages that are very specific in their data types and they're not dynamically typed like Python is. A four and a 4.0 are different and you have to know how to work with it. For the same reason, a two plus a two is different than a two plus a two. In this sense, we have a two as a string and a two as a string, and what I get is a 22 as a string, a two two put together, which we concatenate it. So anytime you're working with operations in Python or really any language, you really have to be cognizant of what's around the operation and how it's going to work. So in our case, if I use integers and do the math, I get integer results. If I do floats, I get float results. If I do strings, I can get string results. You cannot mix and match some data types. Notice I did a float plus an integer and that worked just fine. But if I do a string plus an integer, that does not work. It will break it because I can only concatenate strings, not strings and ints or ints and ints. So you have to be very mindful of what you're working with. Subtraction is the exact same idea. 5 minus 3 makes 2. Integers, if I introduce a float like a 0 0.0 or a 0.3, it'll give me a float answer. Don't ever worry about all of these decimals back here that seem to be somewhat off. We should know that a 5.0 minus 3.3 is just a 1.7. The fact that I get all those zeros in the 2 is simply an adjustment my computer makes to get as precise as possible. But since it's dealing strictly in binary, it doesn't understand how to make that decimal um, using only powers of two, at least very well. So it gets really, really close with some of them. You'll notice it'll be very precise and accurate with most. But sometimes you get these trailing decimals that you need not worry about. We can always round those off and cut them off if need be when we're printing out output. But it will happen from time to time. And just know that there's really nothing you can do about it. It's just a bitwise arithmetic problem that the computer has to handle to be as precise as it possibly can by only using powers of two in binary, whereas we're used to using powers of 10. There is no such thing as string subtraction, so I'm not gonna bother showing it to you. If you wanted to attempt it, you would get an error message. But the only big thing is if I subtract integers, I'll get integer answers. If I subtract decimals, I will get decimal answers. 
Multiplication, same basic idea. 6 times 3 makes 18. If I do a 3 times 2.2 or 2.1, again, I get a 6.3 repeating, and or 6.3 with that bunch of zeros in the 1. Again, a bitwise operation that we really can't fix. But if I do something like a 5.5 times 2, it'll probably end up just fine as an 11.0. So it doesn't always happen. It just happens from time to time. But again, integers times integers gets integers. Floats times anything give me a float. Um, we can even actually do a string times an integer. And speaking of, it actually makes sense because multiplication is nothing more than a shortcut for addition. So what I'm asking you here for in this problem is 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, which means I've got three threes being added together. I can only ever multiply by an integer. As soon as I introduce a float, it will not like it. Even if the float is something like a 4.0, it won't do it for us. Okay. So uh, the next one to talk about is real number division. So let's do something like an 8 divided by 2. I'm sorry, I had an extra space in there. And I'll get a 4.0. Now, the thing, the thing you need to remember about real number division is it will always give you a decimal answer, no matter what you plug in. Notice I plugged in two integers, and all the examples before I got an integer result. In Python, you will get a decimal result every time. It doesn't matter if I put a decimal in the division or if I don't, but like a 1 divided by 2 is going to give me a 0.5. No matter what I do, I will get a decimal response. The floor division with the double slash is slightly different. 8 divided by 2 using floor division will yield an integer response. And as long as I put two integers around, it will yield an integer response. Even 9 divided by 2, which we know better as a 4.5, is going to give me a straight 4 because there are only four full 2s that go into a 9. So this is what floor division does. It kind of rounds down, or at least it finds the full number of parts of 2 that I can fit into 9. And that works for any type of division. Let's say I did 19 divided by 4. Again, it would be 4.75, but it actually just gives me the 4. But if I did something like this, let's say a 19 divided by 4.0, it's going to give me a decimal response, but it's not the decimal we would normally think is a 4.75. It still rounds down, truncates, cuts it off, but still it gives me a decimal answer because I put decimals in. Your answer will always be as precise as your problem okay, in terms of level of precision at the very least. Uh, modulus, let's stick with the 19. <clears throat> modulus is a remainder division. It'll tell us how much is left over after doing the operation. Okay? In our case, 14 or 19 divided by 4 makes 4. 4 times 4 is technically 16, so there are three parts left over. And again, there's my answer, so it'll tell me what's left. If I divide something by 2, okay, I can only ever get two answers, a 1 or a 0. And what that signifies is usually whether or not the number is even or odd. So if it's odd, I'll get a 1 as an answer. If it's 0, I'll get an even. But realistically, it's pretty simple. Modular division just tells us how many pieces are left over after we do the whole piece. So you can see that the floor division and the modular division work well hand in hand. So like 10 divided by 4 makes 2, because I can get two full 4s into 10. But 10 mod 4 is also 2 because there's two parts left over. 4 times 2 makes 8, so 9, 10, there's your two that are left over as you're working your way through. Powers are pretty simple, okay? Double star notation, this will simply say 2 to the third power, which makes 8. 4 to the 1 half, or 0.5, that'll give you a square root, so something like 2. So if you wanted to do 16 to the 0.5, that will square root 16 and give you a 4.0. Again, if I put an integers in, I will get an integer response. If I ever introduce a decimal in any spot, I will get a uh, decimal response, so 16.0. So essentially that's it when it comes to the operations. There's not a whole lot to it, okay? Most of the time you'll be using them in the context of a variable. So something like uh, value 1 equals 3, value 2 equals 6, and you might say total equals value 1 plus value 2. And we should know since value 1 and value 2 are both integers, guess what? So is total. It's going to be an integer and the sum for all three both of those parts. So uh, realistically, the math doesn't change whether or not you're using variables or not. You just need to know at this juncture what kind of answer you get from the math that you do. You have addition, subtraction, multiplication, three types of division, floor division, or sorry, real number division, floor division, modulus, or remainder division. You just have to be aware of what each one does and how it works and understand what kind of answer you're really looking for. 
powers or powers, pretty simple to work with. And again, whatever you wrap around your problem is the type of answer you get. Floats give you floats, integers will give you integers. All right, that should do it. In the next video, we'll talk about a problem in whole and uh, how we can incorporate var variables, input, and the arithmetic all together.